a really good weekend unless you live and if you was affected by the tornado I hope you're all well and recovering from what was a terrible day yesterday um, so another week um, as it's Monday we always start off with a album ranking of an artist or a band and today we are starting with one of my favorite singers songwriters performers Peter Gabriel um, he sort of inspired me to my writing um, because my English teacher says said to me he says well, you, he says who do you think you are Peter Gabriel I went well I do like Peter Gabriel and he went oh, that, well it's obvious he said in, when you write your poems um, so that's how much of an influence this chap's had on me um, he's had so many people play um, with him on his albums I'm not I'm just going to mention some of the um, main players because we'll be here all day um, he's, I mean P Peter Hamill's appeared on a few Tony Levin uh, a great bass player of course um, Kate Bush one of my favourite female singers Rep of course from King Crimson Phil Collins has played on some of his stuff Morris Pert and Sinead O'Connor so but we've got plenty of well known people that have played on Peter Gabriel albums Um I'm not going to have to tell you too much. We all know where he come from and where he, when he left Genesis. Um, so he's released nine studio albums. I haven't included the soundtracks um, because they're they're sort of when you look on official discographies that they are separate from the. Uh, rest of the albums these are all the ones that are officially on his studio discography so let's get cracking okay coming in at number nine is the eighth album studio album recorded at his home studio and was released in February 2010 it is scratch my back this is a covers album there's not much I can say about this because it's not a very good covers album. Okay, the first song on here is Heroes, of course, David Bowie. Uh, it's just dull. It's got it's nothing like the original. Um, I love the original, of course. Um, it's an inspirational song to me, but this isn't. There's nothing inspirational about this version. Okay, The Boy in the Bubble, Paul Simon, a great track, but this is too too slow, too... Let's fall asleep, it just doesn't do anything for you. Mirrorball, now I love this song by Elbow. Um, we are featuring Elbow next year, probably early next year, um, but he absolutely mullers it. It doesn't do anything for me. Then Flume. Ah, it's just awful listening wind you know great track from talking heads but this is just dull the power of the heart a Lou Reed song doesn't do much for me either uh, then we get an arc arcade fire cover my body is a cage dearie me it just doesn't get any better um the Book of Love from the Magnetic Fields oh sends you to sleep you know when you listen to this album you just want it to end um, I think it's going to rain today Randy Newman song and Muller's it A Prey Moir from Regina Spectre isn't too bad it's quite listenable and then probably the worst version of Philadelphia from Neil Young that I've ever heard doesn't do nothing for me Street Spirit from Radiohead no I'm not a great Radiohead fan I don't see the uh, why people think they're so good personally I think they're just a band that 
if you run out of anaesthetic you pop radio head on if you're a radio fan that's that's great but me I just cannot get into them never have I've tried but I can't but that is just awful anyway um, then there's a spo I've got the bonus disc version with my sins um, you got a remix of the book of love that doesn't sound any better my body is a cage just doesn't sound right again it's just terrible but the one song on here that is good on the bonus disc is Waterloo Sunset and it sounds really good and I don't mind listening to that and then Heroes again it's called the Wildy Beast Mix nah so this is probably the worst cover album that I own by one of my favourite artists um, it's just one of them albums that I don't play I think I played it once when I brought it and thought god this is awful and when I started I went and revisited it to do this and I thought I only got halfway through <laughs> and I thought no I've got and then I just played a little bit of the other tracks just to get me brain round it but I did play the whole of Waterloo Sunset so unfortunately I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 1 out of 10 I don't give many ones but that one I have to because it's just dull okay coming in at number eight this is the most current album from Peter Gabriel released in 2011 new blood this album consists of orchestral re-recordings of various tracks from Gabriel's career okay the first track is the ribbon from the heat from Peter Gabriel 4 not a bad in I don't mind this I do like this track anyway so it, it's not a bad version and the orchestral version is pretty cool uh, then we get downside up from Ovo I don't like Ovo anyway so I'm not gonna like that version either San Janico from Peter Gabriel 4 it hasn't got the lift that it needs uh, it just doesn't work as an orchestral number Intruder from Peter Gabriel 3 lovely track uh, I like this interpretation of that as well Wallflower from PG4 it just doesn't work as of, um, of the classical version in your eyes it's not too bad on um, it's I've heard worse uh, Mercy Street it just doesn't work I don't think um, Red Rain it's not too bad it's listenable just um, Darkness from Up no we'll find out why in a minute don't give up okay it's not got Kate Bush on it it's got Anne Brun it's not bad I can cope with that one uh, but it's a but it's not a patch on the original digging the dirt it just doesn't work again as a classical piece the nest that nailed in the sky probably the worst track on Ovo and it's probably the worst track on here a quiet moment is an um, previously unreleased track um, it's all right best track on here is Salisbury Hill I love the song anyway and it's not a bad version okay again this album is dull and boring and to top it off you get an extra disc if it as the instrumentals and that's even worse I just don't I just didn't get this at all um, but there are three tracks on there that I do like so I'll give it an RTO ranking of 3 out of 10 okay coming in at number 7 we have the 7th studio album from Peter Gabriel it's the last full length studio album of original material to date and it's up from 2002 okay the first track is darkness now as I said it didn't work as a classical music and there's a good reason because this is a great track because it's 
it's the percussion arrangement on this that really makes this song and it's got elements of that old school Peter Gabriel fantastic track um, Growing Up love this uh, it's just soulful Peter Gabriel and his best and I love the drum beat in this as well fantastic uh, Sky Blue starts off really well and then just meanders around kicking its heels when do I finish um, no way out not a bad song but it's about three minutes too long I grieve um, lots of elements of that classic Peter Gabriel on here but towards the end again it starts to meander and needs to end. Um, Barry Williams show. Nah, I just don't like it. It's one of them tracks I skip. <laughs> I put it on for about 30 seconds when I listened to this and I thought no I just can't do any more. I just don't like it. I don't like the arrangement at all. Um, my head sounds like that again starts off very very strong unlike a candle that's coming to the end of its life just fizzles out more than this I like this one a lot because it's got different elements to it that keeps the song going it's not at one level all the way through it's it's got different movements and I really like that song Signal to Noise featuring Nuras Fatel Ali Khan. Oh dear. Just doesn't do anything for me. Sorry. Um, the last track, The Drop. Love this. It's, it's a quiet number. It's short. But it's, it's solid. It knows when to end good way to end the album okay this album has got some really good songs but what I I'm disappointed with and it makes this where this album is they're too long they're just far too long to be on the same sort of um, level there's nothing there to boost it there's nothing there to make you want to listen to it more a couple of the tracks yes because it changes tempo but a lot of these just go a meander along and and a lot of the tracks are at least three minutes too long um, if the tr these sh tracks were shorter I think we'd have a really solid album but there are some good tracks on here so I'll give it an RTO ranking of 5 out of 10 Okay, coming in at number six, we have the second um, solo album released in 1978, Peter Gabriel 2. Notice I didn't call it Scratch. Um, let's see, I do know that Robert Fritt and Tony Levin are on this. Um, pretty cool. Tim Capello on the saxophone as well that is really good first track is On The Air great track love the drumming in this love the keyboard arrangement it sounds fantastic and I like that then we get my favourite track on the album DIY catchy tune, great bass line from Tony Levin of course uh, it's just a catchy tune Mother of Violence, I love this. I love the piano work on this and it reminds me of some of that very early Genesis and I'm talking um, very early because it's very pastiche in places. Very nice song, co-written by Jill, his wife. Um, number four on the track, the track is called A Wonderful Day in a One Way World quite proggy this is and I think it has a lot to do with the influence of Mr Robert Fripp 
very good track I enjoy that one a lot white shadow never been into that track as much as I've tried I just don't like it very much indigo great track um, sounds very Genesis this one does and you could imagine Phil Collins actually singing this it's a great track I don't know if it's something left over from uh, from the lamb or anything that's been kicking around a long time but it's a very good track then we get another of my favorite tracks animal magic love the guitar work from Robert Fripp on this absolutely fantastic then we get exposure um, could have appeared on any King Crimson album really very very good track uh, Flopsom and Jepsum bit poppy um, but it's a great lyric from Peter and he sings it fantastic Perspective um, never liked that one either it's just I just don't get it it's a bit of a dirge um, then the final track Home Sweet Home reminds me of a lot of something that you'd get John Lennon or Elton John singing um, great stuff and it's got a fantastic saxophone solo in this good way to end the album a uh, bit of a mixed bag this is um, it's a good album I don't dislike it um, but it didn't have the same impact as the debut album but it's still got some great tracks on like DIY and Animal Magic and Indigo so I'll give it an RTO ranking of 7 out of 10 okay coming in at number 5 we have the sixth album released in 1992 us opens up with the brilliant come talk to me with Sinead O'Connor great supporting vocals from Sinead on this it is a great track um, love to be loved it's okay it's not bad it's not good it's I'm on the fence with that one I don't skip it but I just don't like it then we get the brilliant Blood of Eden if it wasn't for Sinead O'Connor though this song would be pretty dull but she, she's got a lovely voice okay she's a bit controversial as Sinead but she can sing and she is fantastic on that then we get Steam uh, trying to create another sledgehammer I think it's not as good but it's still a very good track only us not the best track on the album um, it's listenable but it's just um, washing of the water it's just dull dull as they come unfortunately he has got some stinkers and that's one of them um, digging the dirt best track on the album great sound on it it's got that it's proper classic um, Peter Gabriel um, 14 black paintings all I'll say that if you run out of anaesthetic in a hospital put that on I just don't like it it's dull it's meanders it just doesn't do anything let me get kiss that frog very uplifting track uh, nice rhythm to it some some incredible lyrics uh, pretty cool uh, then we get Secret World again this is a track that just goes on and on and on at the same pace good song too long again this album is a mixed bag of goodies it's got some brilliance on it it's got some stinkers but for the brilliance I'll give it an RTO ranking of 8 out of 10 ok coming in at number 4 is the 4th album released in 1983 and it's Peter Gabriel 4 all the 4's the 4th album coming in at number four and called Peter Gabriel for in America of course it's called security 
why? I, I just don't get that. But that that's 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 that, you know. Okay, first track. Rhythm of the Heat. I just love this Aboriginal intro type thing. It's eerie. It's atmospheric. And it's great vocal from Peter. Love that drumming towards the end as well. It's just superb. Then we get San Janico. Brilliant track. Love the atmosphere. Love the different sounds and the it's just a fantastic vocal from Peter and it didn't work as a classical piece because you need that atmosphere, you need that rhythm and it just didn't hit it. Okay, I have the touch, my favourite track on the album. What a bass line. It's just I just love the drumming on it, the way it works, it's a fantastic song. Uh, the Family in the Fishing Net another classic song from Peter Gabriel I just love how it's put together I love the rhythm I love the sound terrific track Shock the Monkey uh, the, the commercial song on here but it's a great track love the bass line it's uplifting, it's catchy as well let me get the brilliant Lay Your Hands On Me. This is one of those um, anthems from Peter Gabriel. And if you've seen any of the live stuff, um, he, when he goes into the crowd and they move him around, um, it, it's just amazing stuff. Um, I haven't put the playlist together yet, but I'm going to try and find... A clip of that him being put, moved around this thing because it's just incredible. Um, Wallflower, great lyrics, some of Peter's finest. Uh, it's just tremendous. Uh, and the last track on the album, Kiss Alive, bit of a filler to me. Truly, this is a brilliant album. Ninety percent of the tracks are solid. Peter gave brilliant performance on some great lyrics great arrangements absolutely banging album um, so I'm going to give it an RTO ranking of 8.5 ok coming in at number 3 it's the 5th album released in 1986 and it is so um, what an album this is um, Red Rain brilliant the drums are great and it just builds up into a really good song. Then we get one of the best tracks from the 1980s, one of the best videos from the 1980s, and one of, of course, Peter Gabriel's best songs, Sledgehammer. I love this track. Absolutely brilliant, but it's not the best track on the album. The best track on the album is the next one. Don't Give Up, featuring the fantastic Kate Bush. One of my favourite female artists ever. And we are doing a show on her soon. Uh, I just love her voice in this. She is such a great singer. Not the first time she's appeared on a track by Peter Gabriel, of course. But it's just fantastic. That voice again, I don't like the production on this. It's 280s. The synth sound doesn't sound right. It just doesn't suit Peter Gabriel. Then we get the brilliant um, in your, your eyes. Very good. Mercy Street goes on a bit too long for me. Big time. Uh, it's a living poppy thing but it's it not the best track on the album um, then we got we we do what we want we're I'll start again again we do what we're told Milgram's 37 
it's okay. Okay, this is a good album. Um, side one is the stronger of the two. Um, the second album side is a little bit dour. It only lifts up with big time. Um, but it's still a great album. Playing a lot, actually. <laughs> Even though the side two does this is a bit weaker. Don't dislike the songs, I just think they're weaker songs. So I'll give it an RTO ranking of 9 out of 10. Top 2. Boy, was this hard. I love these albums. Both equal. And uh, it, when I took it, this, I just had to sit and play them and... I think the one that's number one is more personal than this one. Probably because the one that's number one is the first album I got by Peter Gabriel. Uh, and it's, I've got a lot of fond memories of that album. So um, that's probably why. So coming in at number two then, from 1977, it's the debut album, self-titled Peter Gabriel some great tracks on this album for example the first track Mori Bund and the Burgermeister oh this could have been on the Lamb Lies Art down on Broadway I just love the weirdness the arrangement it's just a fantastic track you know first song on a solo album and you come up with a classic like that brilliant um, second track is Salisbury Hill of course you don't have to say too much about that it's a favourite song of mine definitely top 10 lovely song I love the lyrics in it um, Modern Love great guitar riff on this and the track's brilliant then we get this little quirky thing called Excuse Me very 20s as I call it, it's a little bit of a nonsense track, but I love it. I love the vocal in it. It's very Bob Dylan in places, the vocal. Ah, it's brilliant. Then we get one of my favourite tracks, Hundrum. Love the melody in this. Love the mood in it, it's fantastic. Slow Burn, another great track. Again, could have come straight off the lamb. You just wonder if some of these tracks I sort of left over from that period that never saw the light of day in Genesis times. Waiting for the big one. Uh, this is a quite a bluesy, jazzy track, and I do like it. Down the Dolce Vita, great progressive rock track. This is without a doubt. Peter Gabriel is still writing some great stuff. Um, the last track here comes the flood stunning track starts off quiet and just builds up and builds up and builds up into this great anthem -y type track fantastic this was a stunning debut album I think there are tracks on here that are probably from the um, Genesis camp that didn't get used and I don't blame him putting them out on this album because they are absolutely brilliant and it's got some these have got some iconic tracks even today so I'll give this an RTO ranking of 9.4 okay my number one an, an album for my teenage years uh, the first one I got by Peter Gabriel as an album released in May 1980 is Peter Gabriel 3 Oh, I love this album. It's my go-to album for Peter Gabriel every day of the week. I just can't get enough of this album. Even after all these years, I still love every track. Opens up with the brilliant Intruder. Of course, this has got Phil Collins drumming on it. And I love that. When you find out that Phil Collins is working with Peter Gabriel. 
I mean, they're, they're all still good mates. That's the thing. Okay, musically, they <laughs> a quibble and that, but on the whole, I think they're all still talk to each other. And uh, Intruder is just a brilliant track. Great vocal from uh, Peter, and the lyrics are great. Second track, No Self Control, another stonking. Love the rhythm on this. Uh, brilliant track. I just love the vocal and the difference. The chorus slide is such a catchy one. Then you get this little, little. 1 minute 21 and a sax solo and I love the saxophone so I like that a filling a filler song that I actually like I know it's um, rare but I do like that one I don't remember I love this a really de deep bass line some great drumming on here and a wailing Peter Gabriel it's just brilliant family snapshot another a track I just love it builds up again there's lots of different elements in this track it starts off nice and gentle and just builds up into this absolutely booming song fantastic and through the wire some great uh, guitar work on this fine performance by Peter on the vocally fantastic then we get my favorite track by um, Peter Gabriel also features Kate Bush again it's Games Without Frontiers oh, I love this song I just like how that, that start that and then Jean Frontiers from Kate Bush and I love the lyrics brilliant um, not one of us Again, one of them great mel melodies uh, with a the chorus is so hooky, fantastic. Lead a normal life, another good track. I love the melody and the piano work again on this. Very strong lyrics. Love re I love listening to some of Peter Gabriel's lyrics and reading them because they're just fantastic. He's got a way with words. Um, while we're on the tub there's three people I love looking at their lyrics Jim Morrison Peter Gabriel and Fish they, they, to me they do write some great words and the last track is the fantastic Biko best version of this though is actually on the Peter Gabriel plays live this track dedicated to Stephen Biko of course fantastic track what a way to end a great album one of my favourite albums from the 80s without a doubt um, truly amazing album I think it's got some of Peter's best solo lyrically it's the songs on here yeah, they're all brilliant got some great musicians on here again uh Production wise, it's fantastic, and this is why it's my number one. Apart from this, my first Peter Gabriel album. So, I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 9.5. Well, there we go, Peter Gabriel, another member of Genesis that we've looked at, but we've not ranked Genesis's albums yet. If someone asks though, I might do it. Might just do it. I know we've got, I've got some of um, Mike, Mike and the Mechanics will be coming up at some stage. Um, but at the moment, I have no intentions of doing Genesis. I've done their live albums, but I've not done their studio albums because there's quite a lot of people that have done it. But you know how we work on RTO. You ask for it, you'll get it. So if you want me to um, do the Genesis, rank the Genesis albums, I will because I can make that list right now. I know exactly how they will go. So put it in the comments below uh, and uh, you might see Genesis in the next two or three weeks. 
Okay, um, next show today is part two of John Lord. I've had to put it in the classic albums, of course, because on Friday, the One Hit Wonder review is Dream Theater's new album, and I wanted to keep continuity, so I've popped it in the classic album this week. So that'll be back for that later, so ta-ta for now.